Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click that notification bell. It is Monday, October the 31st. Happy Reformation Day, everybody. <laughs> Our uh, opening scripture comes from the book of John, chapter 1, verse 29. It says, look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Lately, the Lord has been giving me a larger view of my transgressions, a kind of third person perspective that allows me to back up and see what he sees and call it what he calls it. We need that, guys. Don't shy away from that. I cringe when I ask the Lord to show me how things look sometimes. It's not pretty. Falling short, missing the mark, sin. Instead of fighting against the revelation or grieving myself into paralysis over its implications, I'm learning to simply confess my faults, my weaknesses, and even my willful sin. Accept God's forgiveness and move on with my life. Amen to that. Somehow in the past, I had confused repentance with penance. Bad me, bad me, I'd cry in my heart as I beat myself bloody for my failures. How could I have done this? How can God still love me? You see, I had picked up the false belief that I had to feel really bad for a certain amount of time before I could be forgiven. That I had to add something to the cross and the shed blood of Christ. I'm going to pause there for a second because I've seen many people do this. I've seen this happen with some family members of mine and I've seen other people do it, that it's almost like a self-hatred whenever you bring loving correction or you point out to them, you're trying to communicate and let them know uh, your words, your tone. And I've been guilty of doing this myself. So I'm, I'm right in line with this. And the Lord corrected me. And so I want to say the big self-deprecating, oh, I'm such an awful, horrible person. I wish I'd never been born. You know, why did, why was I ever born? Blah, blah, blah. It's almost like you want to be overly dramatic about the wrong that you did. But there's a, there's something wrong in the spirit about that. Because God made you for a reason and you need to be, uh, we need to be not just you, we need to be in a place where we can hear correction. We can hear that something we did thoughtlessly caused hurt or harm to someone, own it, repent of that, offer our sincerest apologies. That beating yourself up verbally, that's not accepting responsibility. That's trying to deflect. Okay. Don't do that. Okay. I've had to say, I've done it myself. I've done it myself. We don't like being wrong. We don't like being corrected. And the Bible says only a fool spurns correction. I don't think I'm saying the exact words, but basically that's it. A fool runs away from co correction. If you feel embarrassed or humiliated or you feel like, gee, so much time has passed. Why are you bringing that up now? And start deflecting and, and saying the person who brought it to you has the flaw. They're the ones who need to repent before God because they're dragging up a past that's long gone, blah, blah, blah. I mean, all these little tricks and manipulations are things the devil does. We have to own it, okay? Even if it's been a year ago, 10 years ago, if someone has a memory that gets stirred up, now I'm not talking about somebody who stays in a constant state of negativity and they can't get past anything that every memory, you know, once they bring it up and you sincerely apologize and ask forgiveness for something that you said or did that caused them hurt or harm in any way. Now, we know there's a spirit behind that, but your words had impact. And so you can say, I'm so sorry that my words hurt you. That wasn't my intention. But I, I do ask your forgiveness for the hurt that you've gone through. After that, if they bring it up to you again, that's on them. But it has to be done with a heart of love, okay? But that self-deprecating, beating yourself up, uh, was that, that is not true repentance. That's almost a dramatic overdone outward demonstration, but you're not really owning. You're not really applying the word. 
in order to grow. Okay. People aren't, I'll say most people who come to you with that, they aren't doing it to put, put you down. What they're doing is they're trying to build relationship with you by communicating with you. I don't think anybody ever comes to you. The accuser of the brethren will have people in your life. He fractures relationship. God brings healing and strengthens relationships. Don't be afraid to hear something. It might hurt you, but if the, the Lord is going to use that to bring correction, to refine those parts of you that need refinement, don't think you don't need refinement. You do. There are areas of your life. I just had a long conversation yesterday with my daughter, lots of tears and things like that of parts of my personality. It was a silly, stupid thing. And I owned it and I had no idea how the tone of my voice or my volume or my frustration um, impacted her. I had no idea. And we were able to talk about it, her and I both, about the things that, that are bothering her, the things that she's struggling with. And, you know, I shared how some of her words came across to me. It was a really good healing time. I'm sure it wasn't good for, it wasn't nice for her to hear some of the things that I had to say. And I know some of the things that she had to say stung. So you have to have those conversations if you're going to strengthen relationship. It's how you better understand somebody. But in the sense of all that too, it's important that we are growing, that we're not saying, and this was the crux of our conversation yesterday, people have to grow when they hear that there's something the enemy is weaponizing not just, well, that's your problem. That's just my personality. Don't ever have those words. I ask the Lord daily, you made me the way I am. I don't want any part of what I am to be damaging to anyone else or to be weaponized by the devil to create hurt or offense. You help me because I know I don't always say things in the right way. I, my energy can sometimes come across in an overwhelming manner in a negative way. I don't want that negativity. I don't want it. And so there's that. But just make sure that what you're doing is in a place of sincerity, submission, and surrender to the Lord. When you do that to people and, oh, I wish I'd never been born. Oh, what's wrong with me? I hate myself. You know, those things, that's not, that doesn't impress God. That doesn't impress and it doesn't build relationship with the person you're speaking to. That fractures it. Okay, just so you know, it's having the opposite effect. All right. But the problem with that twisted way of thinking was that by the time I had felt bad enough for my sins to receive forgiveness, I had usually sinned again, <laughs> which, of course, launched me into another round of guilt and shame, a downward spiral of condemnation. Do you hear this? I never experienced any release from the heavy load of guilt. Only the weight of sin piled upon sin, piled upon sin. See, that stuff is not from the Lord. That's not repentance. Okay? Do things God's way. You're going to walk in freedom and blessing. No wonder I couldn't remember the good news. Spiritual amnesia had wiped out the power of the cross and left, with, left only myself as a savior. And try as I might, I could never deliver myself from this particular body of sin and death. For there is only one Messiah, only one perfect lamb, one lion of Judah who can break every chain. Feeling guilty is not from the Lord. Guilt is the enemy's tool. Guilt is the enemy's weapon. And if you're embracing one of his weapons, oh, how terrible and awful I am. Oh, how awful. Oh, shame, shame, shame on me. That's not the Lord. That is not the Lord. That is not repentance in any way. It's not. God wants you to hear, admit, submit, repent, and then receive the blessing. Receive the blessing of restored and strengthened relationship. Receive the blessing of redemption. Receive the blessing of the refiner's fire that burns out all those things that have been stumbling blocks. He has the power to do all of that instead of living under the heavy weight of guilt and shame. If you have something that <clears throat> you want changed in your life, things that continue to happen, they seem to be stumbling blocks in your way, 
You just have to take that to the Lord. Say, Lord, I'm tired of this, that, or the other. Yeah, I, I mean, I've gone to the Lord and I said, Lord, I'm tired of communications with other people being messed up and creating problems in relationships. And I've, I've taken that to the Lord and I will continue to take that to the Lord that he will open up because there's a Leviathan spirit that messes with communication. You know, you say one thing to somebody and what they heard you say is completely different than what you actually said because the devil took and twisted the meaning in their ears. You think that's not spiritual? Oh, it absolutely is. And so you know, comprehension, what you hear people say, Lord, let me hear what they actually meant and let me speak and clarify and speak perfectly what my meaning and my intentions are. And that can happen professionally, not just relationally, on the job. Have you ever been given instructions by your boss for you to misunderstand the instructions and get it wrong? I pray for that too. Lord, let me hear and properly clarify, not be filled with fear to clarify, you know, not to feel stupid or to, oh, they're going to think I'm an idiot if I ask this question to clarify. I've been there. I've been there. And that usually leads to more problems. But in those things, that's something I've taken to the Lord that most people might not think is necessary. Because it's just a matter of listening. Well, I can't tell you how many times I've spoken something and had it completely misunderstood completely. And I thought it was clear. So it's like, okay, okay. So that's that. You always own the words that come out of your own mouth. Even if somebody completely heard them the wrong way, just always own your words, own it. And in the interest of building relationship, bring that stuff. So anyway, I've gone off on many tangents today. Our scripture reading, where there's my Bible across the room. Hold on. Hold on and look at my pretty flowers. That's actually not an arrangement. That is flowers I've just stuck in there to use in my crafting. So I thought it looked really pretty. I was like, oh, wow, that looks nice. I didn't even intend that. Hold on. <coughs> I love the fall. My lungs don't love the fall. Thank you, Lord, for healing. Our uh, reflection scriptures out of the book of Titus. Titus chapter three. Oh, I have to look this up. Let's see. Because it's one of those small books that you can whiz right by. Hold on. Let me make sure I have it in the right place. Mm -hmm. It's right after Second Timothy. I thought so. And there we go. Uh, Titus chapter three. This is this is Titus, the whole book of Titus. <laughs> uh, verses four through seven. We're reflecting. Okay. If you turn when you turn to that, underline keywords in this passage, then pray it back to God. Praying the scriptures, you'll never go wrong. Thanking him for the gift of his son. I mean, this is another one to write down in my uh, prayer book. Okay, underlying keywords, four through seven. But when our Savior revealed his kindness and love, he saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and new life through the Holy Spirit. He generously poured out the spirit upon us through Jesus Christ, our savior, because of his grace, he declared us righteous and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. If you ever wanted to know how you can know you're going to be saved, that's it. He did all that 
declared us righteous and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. I'm going to heaven, guys. When my time here is finished, <clears throat> when my mansion up there is finished, construction, I'm leaving. And it's not going to be a sad day. It's going to be a happy day. The best day of my life. And I know that God is going to do the same for all of you who accept him. Let's pray. Remember, that's Titus chapter 3, verses 4 through 7. Look it up and underline those. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for today. I thank you, Father, that this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us the confidence of eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ. And Father, we know today has different meaning for other people. We right now take authority and bind every demonic force from hell that would seek to do harm to any child who is simply dressing in costumes and collecting candy. We thank you, Lord, that we break every plan of the devil to do harm in any way to anyone physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually this night. We cancel every curse. We send back every spell to its sender. And Father, I give you the glory for reversing and switching, Father God, everything that the enemy intends for evil on this night. Let it be a day filled, Father God, because you have created this day and we take it back from darkness in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for your revelation, for your righteousness and help us, Lord, to be a light and a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for spending a little time with me today. I hope you decide to like and subscribe and click that notification bell. I did upload a couple of things this weekend, uh, some shop with me's, a couple of them, and a DIY. I hope you enjoyed those, uh, making costumes for my uh, granddaughter's 18-inch dolls. No, so those were fun, and she's She's going to love him when she sees him next time I get her. God bless you, and I hope you guys have a wonderful evening tonight. Bye until next time.